aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Too many Israelites are going backwards to increase the sins of Israel instead of moving forward to walk in the ways of the Most High. Many of the doctrines being pushed in the awakening are doctrines that stems from the kingdom of darkness and the traditions of men. The modern day Pharisees are influencing many Israelites to follow the traditions of men instead of obeying the words of the Most High. Albeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. The wicked of our people are looking to be a part of the kingdom of darkness world instead of the most high's world. To those of you who want to serve the Most High in the Spirit and in the truth, do not follow after them. Find out what the Most High has planned for you and walk in the ways of the Most High. By doing this, you will fulfill your destiny. To the newly awakened Israelites, you are what your father is doctrine and is causing many of our people to stumble and increase the sins of the Israelites. The Most High never permitted for this generation and the previous generations to intermarry with the heathens. The Most High wants the Israelite bloodline to remain pure. It is our duty as the descendants of the Israelites to uphold the Most High's command of protecting the Israelite bloodline. When the Most High command you, he is not asking you, he is telling you. Newly awakened Israelites, you will hear in the awakening, many will proclaim, you are what your father is. They will also proclaim the man carry the seed and because the man carry the seed, the man can marry outside of their tribe, a heathen woman, and their children will be Israelites. This doctrine is giving the Israelite males the freedom to be irresponsible with their seed. In the meantime, this doctrine is disregarding and oppressing the daughters of Zion. It is important to analyze everything you hear, especially doctrines that are popular with the world. The scripture said, whatever is popular with the world is an abomination with the Most High. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Any king with a kingdom is wise enough to know that you do not invite your enemy to the most sacred place in your kingdom unless you're looking to be dethroned. Unfortunately, the Israelite nation was dethroned. Disobedience and blatantly disregarding the commands of the Most High led to the Israelites' demise and their enemies ruling over them. The scripture said we live in the land of our enemies, yet we want to marry our enemies. Satan will mix truth with lies to deceive you. A half truth is a complete lie. This reminds me of the time when Satan said to Eve, you will not die if you eat from the forbidden tree. He went on to say to Eve, the Most High know if you eat from the tree, you will become like the Most High, knowing good and evil. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Satan needed Eve and Adam to sin. When they sinned, it gave him the opportunity to rule this world. Satan is doing the exact same thing to this generation of Israelites. Satan is saying to the men of Israel, you are doing nothing wrong. You carry the seed. You can be with whomever you want and your children will be blessed. Satan speaks to please your flesh. Whoever accepts and support this doctrine is fulfilling their lustful flesh desires. They want to be with the heathen woman and not have to face any consequences for their sins. To the newly awakened Israelites, only a daughter of Zion with an Israelite man will make an Israelite child. Newly awakened Israelites, you have to research and ask the Most High to give you knowledge about bloodline. The Most High does everything according to your bloodline. The Most High do not look at the outward appearance to identify his people. 
the people y'all created, they all look alike. The indigenous people of the world are dark. This is why the Most High identify his people by bloodline. Jacob and Esau are twin brothers. Both of them are Hebrews. Their father Isaac is a Hebrew. Although Jacob and Esau are twin brothers, both Esau and Jacob represent two different nations. Just as the scriptures state, the Most High said to Rebekah that two nations was in her womb. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Jacob is the forefather to the head of the Israelite bloodline. Jacob's sons and two of his grandsons are the head of the Israelite tribes. Each tribe is a nation under the Israelite bloodline. Jacob is the starter of the Israelite bloodline. In order for you to be an Israelite, Jacob has to be your forefather. Although the Israelites are Jacob's sons and grandchildren, the bloodline is named after Jacob, not his sons. His son's children are known by the world as Israelites because that is their bloodline. When an Israelite identify his or her tribe, they are acknowledging their fathers, Jacob's sons. If you want to break it down further, those of us who are descendants of slaves would identify as Israelites. That is our bloodline from the tribe of Judah. Esau and Jacob are twin brothers. Esau's descendants are not Israelites. They are of another bloodline, the Bible referred to as Edom or Edomite. Ishmael and his descendants are another bloodline. Ishmael, Esau, and Jacob have something in common. All three are Hebrews. Although all three are Hebrews, each of them are ahead of a bloodline. Only Jacob's descendants are the Israelite bloodline. The promise was transferred to Jacob and his descendants only. If you pair an Ishmaelite with a descendant of Judah, that will not make an Israelite. That is two different bloodlines. When those two different bloodlines merge, that will make a new bloodline. The scripture said the life of all flesh is in the blood. That is why the Most High command the Israelites not to eat the blood of any flesh. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. I want you to understand how important bloodline is. The kingdom of darkness do not want you to value bloodline. That is why the kingdom of darkness is pushing you to spread your seed with everybody. The kingdom of darkness know you are not reproducing yourself. Anybody with spiritual eyes can see you are not reproducing yourself, but your enemies. If you were reproducing yourself, your bloodline would not be bred out by the third generation. How do you preserve something? You preserve by reproducing with its counterpart. How did the Most High preserve life after the flood? He took two of the same kind to preserve his creation. The Most High preserved Noah and his family to repopulate the earth. Noah's family produced the different family bloodlines we know today. The Most High command Noah to take a pair of each animal into the ark, a male cheetah and a female cheetah, a male tiger and a female tiger. The only way any animal would not go extinct, a male and a female of the same species must procreate. The heathens passed strict laws for the endangered animals. Until they increase their population, you cannot hunt them. The Most High knew a cheetah and a tiger would not reproduce a cheetah. That is why he created a male cheetah and a female cheetah. In order to reproduce another Israelite, you need an Israelite male to marry its counterpart, an Israelite female to reproduce an Israelite. An Edomite cannot make an Israelite. An Ishmaelite cannot make an Israelite. Two different bloodlines is not going to make a whole bloodline. Two different bloodline is producing a new species. The black population in the United States is over 40 million. Not all 40 million are Israelites. The Most High said the Israelite population would be small among the heathens. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen and despised among men. If the Israelites continue to be deceived by doctrines of devils, our numbers will continue to decrease. 
We all have heard of the royal family. Many famous royal heathen family today make sure a certain kind of people marry into their family. The heathen's royal family want to preserve their family's bloodline. The heathens marry within to maintain their bloodline. They understand if they let an outsider into their family, they will spoil their seed. In addition, the heathens have standards and they love themselves. The heathens understand the importance of unity and family. Why would the Most High select a family for himself, a peculiar people he chose to call by his name, a royal priesthood, then turn around and say to his people, marry and intermingle with the heathens? The Most High charged this generation to live among the heathens. He did not tell his people to join them. Why did the Most High command his people, the Israelites, not to give their sons and daughters to the other nations for marriage? Why would the Most High, who is holy, tell his people to be holy if he wanted them to be careless with their seed? But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Why would the Most High allow his people to be reckless in that manner? Every other nation in this world understand the importance of preserving their bloodline, but the Israelites do not have a clue. Do not let Satan deceive you. You can only preserve your bloodline if you marry your counterpart. We are not living in the times of our ancestors. There are Israelites all over the world. To the newly awakened Israelites, do not let another disobedient Israelite cause you to stumble with doctrines of devils. When the disciples of Satan approach you with you are what your father is doctrine, ask them, how did Esau spoil his seed? Esau is known to have taken women from many nations for wives. Isaac commanded his son Jacob not to marry the Canaanite woman, rather take a wife from his mother's side of the family. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban thy mother's brother. Jacob married his cousins, Laban's daughters. Laban is Rebekah's brother. Rebekah is Jacob's mother. In order to preserve your bloodline, you must marry your own kind. To the newly awakened Israelites, you will hear a lot of debates about Ruth and many others who married heathens before the laws was given and after the laws was given. Do not entertain them. The Bible said Ruth is a Moabite. There are people who believe she was an Israelite while others believe she was a heathen. Even if she was a Moabite, Ruth and Boaz's offspring is Obed. Obed is the father to Jesse and Jesse is the father to David. So Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. David is the third generation. By the third generation, your blood is clean from its impurities. Our ancestors have committed sins that we should not imitate. Moses murdered a man. Should we follow him and commit murder? No. Just because some prophets married the strange woman does not mean you should follow his footsteps. The times of our ancestors and the times we are living in are not the same. We have clear instructions for our generation. Repentance is what we should be focusing on, not increasing our sins. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Newly awakened Israelites, the heathens will always have a problem with you serving your Elohim. Regardless of how they feel, you are to please the Most High. The heathens covet your inheritance. They want it for themselves, and they will do anything necessary to strip you of your bloodline. 
If they truly love and serve the Most High, they will understand his command of not coveting. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Do not listen to them when they get emotional and say you are discriminating. You have the right to preserve your bloodline. You do not have to give your inheritance away. The strangers who love the Most High understand their role. The strangers will try to help you, not cause you to stumble. The strangers will not argue with you or try to force you to include them. The strangers know their role and their place. A stranger know they should not marry an Israelite. By their behavior, you will know them. Israelites, strive to bring healing and unity into our nation. Following the tradition of men brings destruction. Never did marrying a heathen bring any benefit to our nation, not in the times of our ancestors and certainly not now. You are what your father is doctrine is a false doctrine coming from the kingdom of darkness supported by the disciples of Satan. Do not fall for it. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death.